Hi, Mike with Omni Ray Lighting. Today we're just going to do a simple uh, demonstration of a what we call direct wire or ballast bypass. Uh, this is going to apply for really any length of T8, T10, T12 tubes that you're replacing in a fluorescent fixture. So that'd be four foot, eight foot, even smaller fi fixtures like two foot, three foot. Our product, just so you're aware, is what we call a two end ballast bypass. What I'm going to demonstrate is a two end. The reason for that is that when we're using a G13 or two pin type lamp, which is common in your two foot, three foot, four foot, on up to eight foot. Eight foots will have an R17D FA8 single pin. But with these, um, you're, you're either gonna have a shunted ballot or a shunted socket, or you're gonna have a non-shunted socket. With our system, by wiring each end or each socket on each end of the lamp, it doesn't matter if you have a shunted socket, non-shunted socket. We're just gonna show you a real simple way to wire up your fixture, and that doesn't matter whether it's a two lamp, single lamp, four lamp, six lamp. The application's the same regardless. So with this uh, little setup that we have here, uh, these happen to be a T10, uh, T12 uh, size fluorescent fixture. The larger the diameter, people ask all the time, uh, is a T8 uh, able to replace a T12, a T8 LED? Yes, uh, T, the, the diameter for fluorescent is simply allowing more gas, inert gas, to occupy the tube so that they can punch the wattage at a higher wattage. So what you'll see is a larger diameter will have higher wattages. Um, and that just tells us that generally for a lamp for lamp replacement, we wanna choose a model in LED uh, that is gonna you know, match or surpass that. Uh, first thing with your fixture is always be sure that the power is removed, right? We don't wanna have any power to the, uh, the fixture itself. And most of your fixtures, if it's a, a, a troffer type fixture that would be in a drop ceiling, uh, you open up the, uh, the lens, there's usually a couple tabs and it just swings down on a couple hinges. In the center of that, uh, you generally just pinch it and release it and it'll be just a guard, maybe in a V shape. Um, some models like on your T8 um, or f uh, your eight foot or four foot may have a little tab on each end and you'll simply give it a quarter of a turn or a half turn and it will release it. Um, it may have a screw in it. Once we have this guard released, then things are all basically right inside the, what we call the channel. And so what we're seeing here is a, a single ballast running four lamps. You may have two ballasts running four lamps or two ballasts running six lamps. Um, so in this scenario, it's, it's, it, it does simplify it a bit, but it's all this, the same case scenario. So all we're doing here is you'll see in your fixture the hot and the neutral. So black being hot, white being neutral, those two wires are powering this ballast, right, to power these LED or these uh, fluorescent tubes. So <clears throat> what we're going to be doing here is what I call snip and strip, right? So we're going to take the wires leading in and these wires in various colors leading out to the sockets and we're going to snip them right at the ballast, right? I don't like to leave really anything there. Just so you know, <clears throat> there, there's no question about it. It's, it's completely disabled. So we're going to snip those. Right, and you may have more colors than this. You may have some colors that are solid, some with uh, white stripes on them. You may have uh, green, um, yellow, purple. It doesn't really matter what color it is. So right now, we've, we've dismantled this ballast. We don't physically have to remove it. You can just leave it in there, right? Instead of, you might have 20 or you might have 100 of these. And rather than going through the effort of removing this and you know taking the extra two minutes and then worrying about disposal you can just leave it in there it's not going to harm the environment it's it's perfectly fine um, and so we can just leave that right where it's at so now we've got and, and in a lot of these fixtures when you get in them there's been ballast replacement over years so you'll have wire nuts already in 
the fixture that you can just reuse. Uh, this particular setup, there, there was no re-ballast ever done. There was, there's no wire nuts already inside the unit. So when we choose a wire nut, there are several different colors, right? Uh, and the colors are telling us what the diameter, in other words, certain colors have larger diameters and handle more wire. And so usually depending on how many of these wires you're bundling together um, to your hot or your neutral, you can use a larger wire nut to accommodate the amount of wires that you're bundling together, right? So just so you're aware of that, you don't want to take the little the little blue one, right? You don't want to, that's probably not going to work for what we're doing here. Um, and maybe the red one is just going to be too big because there's not enough wire for it to lock in, right? So just be aware of that so that we get good connections. And so at this point, when you look at it, what you're seeing are whatever colored wires leading to one end of the fixture. And on this particular fixture, there's four lamps or four sockets. So obviously these two wires have already been joined between the sockets to cover all four, right? So we don't have to do anything to the socket. We don't need to remove it, re do any wiring to the socket. All we're concerned about is the wires that are leading to it, right? So on this side, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna choose, and of course for the tools, these are the two tools you really need, right? Snippers and wire strippers. And you can see they're color coded, but you'll, you'll know by the gauge of the wire that's in here which one's best. It's usually in the first couple on here. And so we've already snipped the wires, so we probably won't need that again. And so we're going to take our yellow wires here leading to the four sockets and covering those. And we're going to strip those, right? And we just want to go back um, a little over a quarter of an inch so that when we do make the connection with a wire nut, we're not actually wire nutting the insulator, right? So that we know we're getting good connection here. So let's just right here. And then I'm going to choose the neutral or white wire to cover that end of the fixture. Again, regardless whether it's two lamp, four lamp, six lamp. So we're going to strip that. And some of these wires, depending, they're going to be kind of tough. So maybe give it a little spin to help cut that out of there. And then now we're just combining or joining these wires together to make one connection, right? That's it. So I got white covering one end of my fixture. I'm going to choose, generally the orange ones are pretty, pretty uh, good for these uh, three, four wire. So I'm making sure that I've got a good handle on it here. And I'm going to continue to twist that until I get some, a pretty decent resistance. I don't want to go overboard, but that right now is connected, right? I can just loop that wire back, tuck it up out of the way, nice clean installation. On this side, there's extra wire. We don't really need to do anything with that. If you feel like you want to, um, you know, pull them all the way out, right? Make a little cleaner install to get over to your, you can do some twisting. And that'll get you in that, you know, buy your ballast, right? And then we can do a final snip here, so all the wires are even. And I'm not going to bother too much with our cleanup here, but... Alright, so now we've got all those colored wires covering these four sockets on this end, right? And it, again, it could be two, four, six, one. And now we're just going to, again, we snipped, now we're going to strip. are stripped now we've got one hot wire left right that's the black we're gonna strip him and now we're gonna bundle those wires together I've got you know in this scenario and this may happen a lot you're gonna have what there's five wires and orange maybe just not quite big enough and that's a lot of, then the next step up is really this yellow color that'll accommodate the five wire 
And we just want to look at our wires here. And I know it's kind of a large grouping, but again, this is, well, we're not again, but the, these are, they're, they're, they have a low energy consumption. So it's, it's not like you've got uh, a lot of electricity that's, that's uh, needing to go through this junction here. Now, they're bundled together there, all nice and even. I'm gonna hang on to my wires tightly. Push and turn, and now I'm getting good resistance, and then I'm gonna stop, right? I'll loop that a little bit here so that's out of the way. So typically in the back of a fixture, you, you know, if it's surface mounted, right here is where conduit's coming in, or there's, there's a, a point where it's making the transition for you. All I've done here is simply run that hot and neutral out to a plug, which we're gonna demonstrate in a moment. So at this point, <clears throat> we can remove all the, the tubes, which you can do this in the beginning. It can be the first step. And it depends on the fixture. Some, some fixtures you'll need to pull them all out, you know, just pull them all out and get them out of your way to get in there. And this particular one, it's, it's really not in our way. So we're done there. So we know we've got hot to one end, neutral to the other. At this point, I could just button it right up, right? Boom. And in this scenario, what we've done is we've uh, pulled out our four different wattage LED replacements. Again, they're the two end lamp replacement, all no radio frequency interference. So this isn't gonna affect your garage door remote operation. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, radio reception. Um, one of the only ones on the market that does that, and, and particularly in this price range, there's our label. These are 100 to 277 volt. All of our linkable and replacement lights are 100 to 277. So you really don't even, typically you're gonna have a 110, 120 coming into these fixtures. But even if it was in an industrial setting, uh, at 240, 220, up to 277 even, to lower the amperage draw, which these already have a very low draw, um, the lamp is gonna work. It, it, the driver is self-contained, it, it knows what you're giving it, and it automatically accommodates for that. These lamps also, being in a G13, they have a swivel end, and you'll notice I'm just swiveling that right, right in, locking it in just as though it was uh, a fluorescent lamp. This first lamp is a 20 watt or a 22 watt single row LED. That's your most energy saving lamp and typically gives you about a 20% increase over a uh, 32 watt uh, fluorescent. Actually, it'll still give you a, even a little increase over a 40 watt because there's not that big of a gain because uh, LED is a directional throw. Um, that's our next step. So the next model up from this model is our two row flat mount. It's a 28 watt. So as we gain in wattage, you're just, you're just essentially saying, hey, I just want more light out of the same fixture. So you get to choose out of four wattages how much extra light you want. You start at the 22 and work your way up from there. And these are all, and of course, there's a little protector on these pins, right? So in shipping, we're hoping that those don't get uh, hit, damaged, or broke. All right, and then we're gonna slide that in there. And this is a scenario where this, um, and this is where the uh, swivel ends uh, are very important. I didn't notice that when we, we just kind of got this fixture at a garage sale just as for a demo. So what you'll notice here, this particular fixture was set up so that when you made a full click in, right? Cause we're sliding our pins through and then we're quarter turning so that the pins should be this way. Well, on 99% of the brands on the market, because these are, these have got an aluminum back, right? And they're directional. They would literally be either pointing towards the fixture or pointing out, right? So as you see, I just went to make our connection and now we're gonna be able to spin that around, make full connection, and now it's fully locked in and it's pointing down the way it's supposed to. So on this particular lamp, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. This is also important 
Um, if you have uh, lighting that you're uh, replacing in coolers like uh, meat coolers, produce, all those type of fixtures instead of spinning in, you're just pushing it straight in and they always point towards the back. So these you can spin them to uh, project correctly onto your product. So the next model up, that's a 28 watt. Next model up is a 36. So this is at least twice as bright as a 32 or a 40 watt. And the other thing we do on these, because all that extra output, is we mount those two rows on an, an opposing angle. This spreads the light out. So you've got that extra light instead of just pointing it straight down. Now we're gonna spread it out. So even when you're doing a lamp for lamp replacement with this type of model, you're actually gonna get, get better light distribution at a wider angle out of that same fixture than what you would have with your fluorescent. And so we're gonna slide this in. That's the next model up. And of course, I'm gonna have to turn this now so that it makes full contact. And there we go locked in and pointing in the right direction. Next model we have is the highest wattage on the market. This is uh, 72 watts in a four foot. So you see there's just additional LEDs. We took this model and we configured double the amount of LEDs, double the amount of output from that 36 watt model. That's a great light if you've got um, where we get into these four lamp or six lamp fixtures that are mounted high in the air and are used more of a high bay, let's say 14 to 16 to 20 feet in the air. I'm gonna put this one in, slide it in, make our full turn. So we're getting it fully locked. And I'm gonna make sure we're going in the right direction there. And there we go. Make sure I've got that all the way in there but it's a really good example of why swivel end is important. We always just go the extra step. We wanna make sure when you get this to your home, it's gonna work no matter what you've got. So now what we're gonna do here, we've got our lamps in, everything is wired correctly. Hopefully we made good connections. If not, we can go back and, and move them around a bit and just double check it. So here we go. So that lamp right there, that's where we just, sometimes you gotta jiggle it a bit. But with these swivel ends, we may end up having to uh, play with this just a little bit because we, we gotta get it locked in there correctly. So you've got single row, 22 watt, two row, 28 watt, two row V series, 36 watt, quad row V series, 72 watt. And you can kinda, you, it's, it's not, you're gonna be able to see it on, on film here because of the iris controls and things like that, but you know, obviously it considerably gets brighter from one side to the next, but now we have a, a fixture fully lit up and you've just bypassed the ballast. Uh, whether it's, or again, regardless, whether it's a four foot, eight foot, G13, FA8 single pin, R17D dual contact and our eight footer, that R17D because it's an oblong uh, type pin set, that indicates it's an HO R17D. There's a manufacturer that does run their tombstone up and down versus left to right. That's why we also make a swivel end for that model. Uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, call us on our 800 number and uh, hope this helps out a lot for you and simplifies uh, the wiring methods uh, required for a direct wire uh, LED lamp and ballast bypass. And um, I appreciate your time. Uh, you know, keep in mind, this is a two-end installation. So if we had, if you purchase ever a lamp that says single-end install, that means each pin, one pin is going to be hot, the other one is going to be neutral. Then you have to worry about, I need an unshunted socket because those are not bridging together, those two pins. They, they can't connect. And so then you're changing pins, you're creating a lot more work for yourself. All you're doing here, you're opening it up, snip, strip, hot to one end, neutral to the other. And that's whether it's an eight foot or four foot or what, regardless of the pin type, um, and you're done. The other uh, thing that you'll see as you're looking and researching, you're gonna see a UL 
ballast, or you're going to see for the T8 lamps, UL Type A, Type B, and Type C. So what we've, the UL Type A is strictly a ballast compatible. Don't want it, right? Because the ballast is still going to go bad on you. I mean, they still degrade. Um, it's an extra point of energy loss that you simply don't need because you still have a driver internally in, a, in the lamp that does conversions regardless of whether you're using a ballast or not. So that ballast will go out, uh, eventually you won't be able to get them anymore, uh, and you'll have the expense of a 30, maybe $40 ballast, and uh, you've just done an LED lamp exchange and changed them all out and thought you saved yourself a lot of time and energy, and, and what's happened is you just created a lot more expense, and not just the energy savings, but the replacement and upkeep of that. So we use the Type B, which is strictly ballast bypass, right? The driver's internally uh, located within the cavity of this tube. Um, it automatically converts whatever energy from 100 to 77 uh, to the DC system. Ours is a 24 volt, so it's a longer lasting, better system. Um, and then you have type A and B. Um, the advantage there is, yep, you can save some time, use the ballast for now, and then as the ballast start going out, you can go back later and do this, what we call type B uh, uh, ballast bypass, right? So you pay a little extra for that lamp. It, it, it's just not, if you're gonna do it, just do it is, is our opinion. So we just carry the type B. The type C is a separate driver and then there's nothing inside the lamp other than the LEDs. Uh, you're still rewiring the fixture um, but the ballast is separate then, so if there was ever a failure, it's generally going to be the ballast, or not the ballast, but the, the uh, driver, I'm sorry. So the driver is separate, and then you're powering a two-lamp, three-lamp, four-lamp system. Um, that's where that system then, you've got to choose, you know, the right driver to cover X lamps at X wattage. So it just adds a lot to it. This is just a very simple method. Lamp goes out, our, our warranty is 12 years. Um, anything outside of 90 days, all you pay is the shipping. We ship you, new, you, you get a new lamp um, and that's 12 years. So it's as simple as pulling it down and uh, we have a simple warranty procedure. Um, as long as you follow that, um, you, you'll have a replacement in no time.